Heidi Ho Cinema Cycle fans. 14th of January 2016, it's Friday. Had to deal with some little family emergencies over the past week, so getting a late start here, a little bit behind. Anyway, Alan Rickman died yesterday. Anyway, um, Laserdisc Day, random media generator, has popped up. <laughs> Curious little oddity. Blame it on the bellboy. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever seen this. Um, but reading the album cover for it, I, I realized this actually stars, or is a star vehicle for, uh, Bronson Pinchot. Who, if you don't know who Mr. Pinchot was, he was kind of like in that league with Robin Williams back in the 80s and 90s. He was... Uh, he was on television, kind of like Steve Gutenberg, kind of one of these B-movie actors who was, uh, uh, you know, pushed out there. He had his own television show for a while, a comedy, and I don't recall the name of it. But anyway, uh, he'll be the center person. He is the bellboy, obviously, uh, revolving around a bunch of uh, cameo appearances by other stars in Hollywood at the time. Uh, so I'm thinking uh, somewhat slapstickish comedy for uh, a Friday to end out the day. So let's see what Bronson Pinchot, that's like his name, <laughs> has to do in Blame It on the Bellboy. <clears throat> Not a bad film, actually. Uh, Bronson Pinchot doesn't really show up in much of it. He's just a bumbling bellboy who doesn't speak English, basically. But it's an ensemble cast movie. Uh, and a lot of these people are, are extremely famous B-movie actors. I mean, you've seen them a hundred times. And uh, it's all a matter of mistaken identity in, in, a, in a hotel with people with similar names and how they get spun off into these bizarre situations thinking that they're somebody else. And... Uh, all filmed in Venice. Again, one of those shows where it's like, let's all get together and party and go to Venice and make a movie while we're doing it. Hollywell's Guide to Cinema says about this wonderful little farce. Uh, blame it on the bellboy. At a hotel in Venice, a bellboy confuses the identities of a hitman, a timid estate agent, and a mayor who has arranged a romantic assignation. Tired and tepid farce. Given the performances it deserves. A lightweight ensemble comedy that should check out fast from most hospices. Ingenious plotting is let down by weak dialogue and stop-and-go direction that largely squanders the talent involved. That said, I actually thought it was a pretty good movie. I mean, for the light fare that it is, it's a, you know, a, a comedy. It's an adult comedy. It's not so much slapstick. Very complex plot. You really had no idea what was going on, and it was just kind of subtly humorous you know, through the whole thing. And you really can't predict the ending. You know, the ending is kind of like, you kind of know it'll be happy, but you don't know how it's going to end. So, for a light, you know, comedy fair, not a bad film. 